In this brief lecture, we will introduce an important tool in electrochemical analysis, which is the microelectrodes. We introduced this topic in the last lecture in the context of handling IR compensation. So what is a microelectrode? These are electrodes which are very small um, of the order of fraction of millimeters. So there are two typical structures. One is a hemispherical microelectrode. Uh, this is the electrode and these are insulating regions, okay, surrounding, encapsulating uh, in this region, uh, the microelectrode. This is exposed to the electrolyte. This blue part is the electrolyte, green part is the insulating region, the darkish gray part is the electrode. And there is this another structure, which is the disc structure, which is also common. Uh, this is much easier to fabricate. Uh, this is much easier to analyze. Okay, so for analysis, uh, we will use the hemispherical uh, microelectrode structure. Uh, much of the results and conclusions that we derive using this microelectrode, this kind of microelectrode is also valid to valid for the disk microelectrode. So first, we want to understand what is the advantage of using microelectrode. So let's get the idea uh, on potential drop involved in a microelectrode. So the re relevant Laplacian equation is the following. Um, so what is the um, boundary condition here? So at r equal to a, so a is the radius of this hemispherical region. Uh, you, uh, you just uh, apply the boundary condition. It is equal to current, right? So, and the other boundary condition is as r goes to infinity, the potential is zero. So with this, we can get to the solution uh, for potential. As you can see, um, this is dependent on the radius of the hemispherical region. Kappa is the usual symbol for conductivity, and R is the uh, dis it is sp uh, spherically symmetric. So the solution is also spherically symmetric. What is important here is to get an idea for potential drop. The potential drop is given by this formula. So it is important to note that the potential uh, drop is proportional to A squared, okay? The smaller the A is, A squared will be uh, very less. So what is evident here is for a microelectrode, the potential drops very rapidly, okay? So intuitively also that is easy to understand because as R increases, the hemispherical region also increases, okay? The surface area available for current to pass through also increases. So you would anticipate that the voltage drop is going to be confined to region close to the hemispherical surface, okay? So the central advantage of a uh, microelectrode is the following. That is the potential drop, um, it drops very rapidly in the vicinity of the microelectrode. It has also Im other implication, this kind of behavior has, um, has other implications. Let us look at uh, conditions where, where uh, we are in mass transport limited region. So the, this kind of uh, equation, which we have seen in uh, Cartesian coordinate, here because of the spherical symmetry of the system, we are solving this equation in spherical coordinate. Uh, we have seen this, uh, solved this equation many times uh, in this uh, series of lectures. Uh, for example, you can look at the step change uh, in potential and where uh, mass transfer limited 
behavior also plays a role, where we derive the quartile equation for the first time. So here we are solving that problem in spherical coordinate. What are the relevant boundary condition? At t equal to zero, the, the concentration at all regions uh, is the same as the bulk concentration. At r equal to infinity, even uh, after, let's say, you impose a potential, uh, the bulk concentration remains constant. And because it's mass transport limited at r equal to a, at the surface of the microelectrode, concentration of the species, uh, your concern is zero. The solution can be obtained uh, fairly easily. We won't go into this. This is a standard equation in uh, which must have seen in your transport phenomena classes or in your mass transport class. So you can uh, even otherwise, it's a simple equation you can solve. We'll only discuss the implication of this equation. So as in contrast to the 1D system, which we had used for deriving the quartile equation, the solution has two components two diff with different features. So one is a component which is independent of time. Other is a component uh, wherein the current goes as one by root t. Okay? In the 1D Cartesian system, uh, this was the uh, a current went as one by root t. Uh, that's where we had derived the quartile equation. That is the uh, only part for the current, but here we have two parts of the current. So what does this suggest? As t increases, this term keeps decreasing and you get a steady current. Okay. So this current is only important in short time scale. The short time scale depends upon variety of uh, specific parameters of the microelectrode, but the general conclusion is under uh, as t goes to infinity, you get a steady current. All right. So and only under short time scale, this plays a role. So in if you plot i versus one by root t, you get two things. One is you get an intercept that takes into account this component. And the slope is, uh, is from this part of the current. Okay. So again, this can also be utilized for uh, electroanalysis, like the way we have done in the past, how to get n and how to get d and so on. All right? Uh, but as opposed to the previous methods, here uh, it is much more e uh, easier to perform the analysis um, due to two reasons. We'll come to the uh, reason why it is um, easy to perform analysis. You can first get to the steady state very quickly. Okay, That is one of the advantage. The second re uh, reason is associated with capacitive charging. We'll come to that. So you may ask, till what time, uh, what is the time required to get to the steady state? Uh, so, uh, or when is this, this part important? To know that particular time scale, it is just enough to equate this part to this part and get to the characteristic uh, time scale. Okay? So, here, D, uh, so whenever you have this root t, okay, t to the power of half uh, behavior, uh, this all is indicative of certain diffusive uh, behavior, right? So tau d is indicative of diffusive behavior. So when you equate this part to this part, uh, that characteristic time scale, you call that tau d, and you get this value. So the time dependent part, uh, will come down if a is very small. When a is very small, a squared is smaller, still smaller. So, and then uh, it, this tau d is inversely proportional to the diffusion coefficient. All these things uh, makes intuitive sense. Uh, so, the this time dependent part becomes less and less important if a becomes smaller and smaller. Okay. Then you can also ask uh, till what time is the capacitive charging important? 
Okay, so many times we want, don't want to be looking at the capacitative part. We want to be uh, we want to quickly get over the capacitive region and perform the analysis. So, in when we introduce the capacitive uh, component, in for example, in the random circuit, we saw the characteristic time constant is associated with RC, right? RC is a characteristic time constant. So, if you compute that. This is the R, uh, this is the conductivity, uh, this is a characteristic length scale. So this is R times the capacitance of the microelectrode. So what do we see? The capacitative time scale can be brought down to very small number if A is very small, okay? And if kappa is decreased, all these things make sense, okay? Um, the effect of kappa we have already seen, um, um, and here the emphasis on how to bring down the capacitative time scale by decreasing the relevant uh, length scale, which is the A of the, uh, which is the radius of the microelectrode. Okay, so this is the uh, advantage. One is it's easy to get to the steady state with uh, microelectrodes. The second part is it is uh, uh, the capacitative uh, part is uh, can be brought to lesser and lesser extent by uh, bringing down uh, A, making A smaller and smaller. So as I said that this disk electrode is much easier to fabricate. Okay, so this is very hard, okay? So how do you get a hemispherical, um, a small hemispherical region jutting up, okay? This is a hard problem. So even though this analysis uh, is performed in this geometry. This is a geometry um, where experiments are performed. Uh, one of the advantages is that um, you, the much of the results which we had obtained for this geometry is applicable. Uh, for this geometry, there is a minor variation, but in general, most of the conclusion, the formal solutions, everything is still relevant, all right? Uh, the other parts uh, is that there is, compared to this, uh, system, uh, this system has uh, slightly more non-uniformity in current distribution, okay? So that is a point to note with respect to disk electrode, but this is much more enforceable compared to uh, a hemispherical microelectrode. So there's another advantage. Many times, you don't want to be under limiting current conditions when you are performing the analysis. So typically what is the general behavior that is seen? When you are at low O potentials, you are under kinetic control, okay? When you are at very high O potential, you are at limiting current uh, transport limited conditions. So in between you have this mixed control so typically the O potentials are much larger when you're under limiting current uh, density. So you want to avoid that and you want to, for especially for measuring kinetic parameters, um, you want to be under kinetic control. Let us see whether uh, microelectrodes offer some advantages in this context. So again, what is the uh, relevant equation? It is, uh, when uh, the boundary conditions are, when R equal to infinity or asymptotically it goes to infinity, you are in the bulk concentration. At R equal to A, that is on the surface of the microelectrode, you just equate the current to the mass transport. This gives you the transport of um, the species I onto the electrode surface, onto the microelectrode surface, and that is equated to current this kind of analysis we have performed in the past. So, and the way to solve the uh, concent value of concentration is given by this particular um, equation. It's fairly straightforward to solve this. So from here, what do we get? We get the expression for limiting current density. So the limiting current density goes inversely as A, okay, as A is, gets smaller and smaller. That is, there are even something called ultra microelectrodes. So when you go from microelectrode to ultra microelectrode or 
just from a macro electrode to micro electrode, the limiting current density increases. Okay, so uh, the the so if you want to be so the, what is the scenario we are com contrasting? Okay, so supposing you want to be operating under a particular current density, when you have that current density in a macro electrode. Uh, supposing the current density you want to be operating is let's say uh, thousand, okay, thousand ampere, okay, uh, so, so or, or something like that. When you want to have a, a particular current density for a macro electrode, the limiting current density might be uh, thousand two hundred, okay, but for an ultra micro electrode or micro electrode, the limiting current density will be four thousand, okay, or the it can be made larger and larger uh, because of uh, the decrease in A, okay? Compared to a uh, macro electrode, the, the limiting current density of a micro electrode is much larger. So if you keep your current density the same, when that is, let's say, 1000, if the limiting current density for a micro electrode has, is around 4000, you would no longer be under mixed control. You would be under kinetic control, okay? So given a particular current density, it is much easier to be under kinetic control. That is in this regime, if you have a, a microelectrode because the limiting current density for a microelectrode is much, much larger than the limiting current density for a macroelectrode. All this thing, if you, think through, it boils down to the nature of diffusive process, okay? So there is a large area available for diffusion from where you can collect the material at the surface of the uh, microelectrode, okay? So the phys this physical feature, okay, so uh, of large area being available away from the microelectrode uh, is the fundamental reason for all the advantages that you see with the microelectrode. So to summarize, it is we had started this discussion, this brief discussion, um, with the statement that microelectrodes make it easier to handle IR compensation. Why so? Because the potential drop is very rapid. All right. So when the potential that the potential drop is confined to the near surface of the microelectrode. So it is insensitive where you place the reference electrode and counter, uh, counter electrode. Uh, the experimental setup with uh, micro working electrode, uh, if the working electrode is made up of micro electrode, ultra micro electrode, where you place the reference electrode or the counter electrode, you're not really sensitive, okay? So because the potential drop is just in the vicinity of a microelectrode, okay? Then because of the structural features, um, and we, we saw, we have already analyzed this, the capacitative charging can be achieved in a very short time scale because the that time constant is very less for a microelectrode. And because of these three, uh, the charging time is less and the diffuse one by root uh, T um, also falls off very quickly. Um, that part of the component, that component of the current also falls off very quickly. And it is possible to get to steady state much more quickly with microelectrodes. And then the limiting current density for a microelectrode is much larger. So for a given um, current density, there's much greater chance that you, the system is under kinetic control and you need not handle uh, issues related to mass transport. These are some of the advantages of microelectrode. This is an important uh, tool uh, that has become, that is becoming increasingly um, uh, accessible with the manufacturing of uh, microelectrodes uh, becoming increasingly easy.
Okay, so with this, we will wrap up uh, this brief lecture. Thank you.